Minster, where are you? I, I think, you know, I'm looking for Republicans, independents, and some Democrats to win this election. So, Senator's coming to raise money on, on Wednesday here to Rosemont for the Illinois Republican Party. Do you think there are going to be Mark Kirk voters in that crowd? There will be. Will Mark Kirk be in that crowd? I'm going to be voting. we got votes scheduled. Yeah. Congressman, what are your thoughts on, on Elena Kagan? So I, I believe that this is a lifetime appointment to the United States Supreme Court, our highest court. That's why I'm going to take a very judicious approach and uh, read her writings and watch closely her confirmation hearing. Uh, my view on uh, judicial appointments is that uh, judges should interpret the law, uh, not make it. Americans need to hold lawmakers accountable for the laws they make at the next election. And so we're going to be carefully reviewing. If you were in the Senate, would you have voted for Sotomayor? I don't recall. I, I said no. And how come? Because I, I felt especially that her speech before Duke University in 2005 showed a very uh, activist uh, view towards making laws from the bench. Now, are you so a senator today, what questions would you be asking Kagan? Well, number one, uh, for, uh, for Elena Kagan, she has not served as a justice before. So we want to look at her academic writings, decisions she made as uh, the dean of the Harvard Law School. Um, I think that she has argued at least one case before the Supreme Court uh, in Citizens United as Solicitor General. All that's part of the record that we should review. So the question I, what, what I would say is this. I don't think that we should uh, come to a view right away because uh, the confirmation hearings are very important. And we should hold those confirmation hearings. We shouldn't skip them. But you see what I'm driving at? If you were in that Judiciary Committee and you had an opportunity to ask questions, what would you be asking me? Uh, first of all, I would do, we are in the first hours of her nomination. And so what I would do is uh, read carefully her published works, uh, the arguments that she made as our Solicitor General, uh, and key decisions she made <coughs> as the Dean of the Harvard Law School and, and other places. At that point, then you would have key issues to raise and begin to. Do that. Now, what do you think, think of her not allowing the? Uh, what do you actually say whether you um, before the votes taken? What your position is on that? So, for me, I'm going to carefully review her writings and uh, and then uh, uh, watch the confirmation hearings. And in my view, then make a call. What about what her view on ROTC, her, Congressman? The, 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 her decision at uh, Harvard not to let uh, the recruiters. What do you think of that? Uh, the Supreme Court ruled 9-0 against her position and upheld the, the um, Solomon Amendment. Uh, at her um, uh, Solicitor General hearing, she then confirmed that she would follow the principle of stare decisis and would implement the decision that the Supreme Court made. Mark, the, the Tea Party people have said they don't like that. Do you get anywhere with them by equivocating on Sarah Palin? I mean, it would be better to come out for or against her. I was fairly non-equivocal on the growing debt crisis of the United States and European governments. Tea Party activists, I think, are rightly concerned that uh, the Greek government, the Spanish government, the Portuguese government, the Italian government, the Irish government, the Romanian government, Latvian government, and, and uh, Hungarian government, on top of the U.S. government, are all spending money they don't have. And I think that is a concern that is very well placed. But they all love Sarah Palin, and they want to know if you do or you don't. Well, I am going to, uh, uh, in, in her case, she's not a voter in Illinois, but uh, we seek to add support for more than we can. <laughs> so, so she asked you the press conference with the support for you. At this point, I think I'm going to wage the Kirk campaign. <laughs> well, if I go back to the military equipment, though, you, as, 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 a, as, a, as a military reservist yourself, how did you feel about not just her, but uh, the military being denied access to recruiting around the country. I now. support the Solomon Amendment, and I support the 9-0 Supreme Court decision that I've held. Okay, Congressman, what do you think about those commercials that I see on TV with you standing there with George Bush? Uh, do you have any reaction to that at all, that, that you're somehow, I can't remember the line, but the failed policies that you support? Right. That, but I, I have met with George Bush uh, as president. I've met with Barack Obama as president. When you are elected as our representative to Washington, you tend to meet with the president of the United States. 
Can you, <laughs> just on a military question, and this is just a point of clarification, don't ask, don't tell? Right. I, I don't think Enlighten we should make me a change. Again. Right. Don't think we should make a change. Right. Why not? Because I, I feel that we should uh, keep that out of the workplace, especially in combat environments where we have unique authority by individuals over young men and women. Keep what happens. Keep, keep any sort of pressure like that. You want to make sure that, uh, especially in a combat environment, you want to keep that kind of authority in check. So do you think that people who are who are either openly gay or found out to be gay, should they be discharged from the military because so of it? So for me, I, I support the current policy. So yes. So I support the current policy. Congressman, can we go over to the, the war on terrorism? You know, there have been some critics of the Obama administration have said that, they have, that the policy has been one of reluctance to talk about the war on terror, to talk about Islamic radicals, and that, that has been a problem and, and perhaps a cause of some of not picking up of what's going on with the Christie State bomber, with Fort Hood, and now with the Times Square. Do you agree with that line of criticism? Well, I, I worry that, um, that uh, uh, we need to make sure that uh, we are protecting the American people and relying on more than luck. Uh, that an underwear bomber is not able to detonate, or that a Times Square bomber is a, a poor designer of a uh, vehicle uh, improvised explosive device. Uh, we have now learned that the uh, Times Square bomber uh, had troubling connections uh, to uh, radicals in Pakistan in their frontier autonomous tribal area, uh, and appeared to uh, have uh, significant links to those organizations. In my experience in Afghanistan, and uh, watching it closely, uh, we have taken out a number of key Taliban leaders in the last 90 days. And I think especially the Pakistan Taliban is beginning to think of ways to appear relevant by striking the United States. Uh, that means that we should have an added level of security, uh, and we should call it the way we see it. Uh, these are terrorists who should be captured or killed by the United States, and we should use very clear language. One last question. Can you give us some example of cuts you would make in Springfield or in Washington to fight this uh, runaway spending you talked about? Uh, a whole host of them. Uh, one of the programs that I've led the way with several Kirk amendments is to kill the sugar program of the United States. The sugar program, for example, is uh, one of the number one job killers in the city of Chicago, something that Mayor Daley has uh, been very uh, key in offering support to end. Uh, I commissioned the first Department of Commerce study on the sugar program, uh, which for the first time in its 30-year history said that it had cost over 10,000 jobs, uh, many of them right here in Chicago. I could keep going. For example, I um, am a reformed earmarker. I do not earmark for my own congressional district and uh, seek to restrict earmarks for others. That's why I attacked uh, the bridge to nowhere and uh, made sure that in the House it wasn't funded and we eventually won that battle. When you seek uh, to uh, control federal spending, I think you've got to attack the problem on a number of different levels. First, individual projects like the Bridge to Network. Secondly, small systemic reforms uh, like the um, line item veto. And I'm very encouraged that uh, President Obama apparently will be proposing his own version of the line item veto. Let's remember that President Clinton used the line item veto 92 times to ratchet back wasteful federal spending until the Supreme Court struck it down. And my hope is the Obama proposal will go through and it will withstand Supreme Court attack. And then finally, of course, the balanced budget amendment to the Constitution, which was the right idea in the 1790s and is even more relevant today. Guys, thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you.